What's going on, Chargers fans? I didn't intend to do this video, but after seeing the snap counts and seeing the stats from the game against Denver yesterday, I really wanted to talk about this, and that's the questionable personnel decisions that they made, at least yesterday. We could talk about many of the questionable decisions that they've made all year, but I want to focus just on yesterday. Let's start with the obvious one, and that's Jerry Tillery getting 89% of the snaps yesterday. <laughs> Listen, I understand him not being relegated to a backup role, right? Him going from a starter to missing a game due to COVID to playing 10 snaps. That wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't make any sense. But after you watch the trio of Gaziano, Fahoko, and Merrill do a very good job against the run, even against the pass against the Steelers last week. After watching those guys, you'd think that they would get more snaps or at least maintain some relevant amount of snaps going into the game or through the game. And Staley said that those guys had earned snaps. I think in particular, he said Fahoko and Gaziano, who were both on the active roster. It's not like they were practice squad guys that they called up and now they're back down. Those two are signed to the active roster already. Merrill had to be called up. Now, Merrill was not called up in this game, which is somewhat understandable. Uh, but you obviously still did you know, Gaziano and Fahoko. And those two guys, after playing, excuse me, so the trio of Gaziano, Fahoko, and Merrill played 88 snaps against the Steelers combined. That same trio, granted Merrill didn't play, only had 22 against the Broncos. Despite the fact that they performed maybe better than any interior defensive line performance of the year, outside of maybe the Raiders game, and despite the fact that they were the only good thing really on defense against the Steelers, and despite the fact that you could see out there they had the heart, the passion, the effort, just the will to stop the run, like, oh, we're going to fight and stop the run. Everything that they showed suggests that they deserved more snaps or at least to maintain some relevant amount of snaps. Instead, Jerry Tiller got 89% of the snaps. And do you remember him outside of the, the roughing the passer or whatever it was, unnecessary roughness that he got? I think he finished with two pressures and a run stop, which is, I'm pretty sure, less than both Fahoko and Gaziano had last week. And, and the penalty on top of it. It's so frustrating because those guys deserve to be on the field. Joe Gaziano was probably their best interior defensive lineman last week. And he had seven snaps this game. Can someone explain that to me? Well, because Jerry Tillery came back and he's a former first round pick. And so Gaziano, who has clearly improved and balled out on Sunday night football and was part of the reason you won that game. Seven snaps. Fahoko, 15. I don't think he played much after the first quarter. What are we doing? So that's neat. <laughs> that's a fun one. Okay, let's go to some other ones. Let me back out of these. Let's go to the offense for a second. Okay, let's see. What, is, uh, what was everyone saying all week? Probably should start Brendan Hymas at left guard because Senor Calamete, while he hasn't been awful so far this year, he's not really worked out in several spots. And you can tell in, in multiple instances, he just didn't have it. Not awful, but he didn't really have it. And against the Steelers, he made either the wrong block or didn't execute. And that's what kind of forced the fourth down play to not work. Against the Patriots out of the end zone, he got beat. And Justin Jackson almost got hit for a safety. But sure, let's start him. 100% of the snaps, which is fine. Like, I don't expect him to rotate with Hymas. But <laughs> did anyone think this was a good idea outside of that building? You know, you had uh, Brendan Hymas, who was, listen, a fifth-round pick generally at this point maybe isn't starting. But this is a guy that, again, they drafted. They thought highly of him. He played well in training camp. He was their third string guy. Then he was their second string guy, like kind of rotating with other guys. And then he just dominated the left guard snaps at second string, all training camp and the rest of the preseason. Like he was clearly, at, if anything else, the left guard number two. 
Maybe if he wasn't right guard number two, because they didn't quite work him there as much. I understand that. And them going with Schofield over Hymas, especially in week five, when things are very early, I understand. But Kelamete, after being basically not a good player his whole career, and frankly not that great in this, the limited duty that he had as that extra offensive lineman, to then go ahead and not even give Hymas the opportunity to start at left guard, where they've been working him, where he did show promise in the preseason next to Slater. I don't... <laughs> what? What are we doing? I don't get it. So that makes no sense to me. And Kelamete gave up six pressures, a sack, and I believe had three penalties or two penalties. He at least had two penalties, and it was all on one drive. So that worked out great. That's fun. What else can we talk about? Um, Let's see. Steven Anderson. Six snaps. Why? What did he do? <laughs> did he play poorly in a game? Did I miss something? Let's see. The Eagles. He had a touchdown. Played pretty well. Had like, what, 50-something yards. Vikings. Wasn't a big part of the game plan. In this game, six snaps. Why? Why? But why, why take him out of the game? He had two catches on six snaps. Because he's a good player. But why take him out of the game? I, I, I don't know. And they even said, Steven said that he even saw McKitty playing some fullback. Now, I don't mind McKitty getting more snaps, especially after that Steelers game where he did earn more snaps. Like This is a slight bump up in snaps for him and a, and a season high for him. I think it was 19 and 18 the weeks prior. And then this week it was 21. So it's about the same, but it is a bump up. But him getting that much, I understand, especially because like he was at the goal line smashing Cam Hayward. He looked excellent in the run game. So I think him being out there makes sense to me. I'm not saying that McKitty took away from Anderson, but he kind of did. But why not get Anderson more involved? Why not take away some snaps from Cook or, or, or Parham? I, I don't know. The fact that Steven Anderson only has six snaps it's kind of almost no surprise that the offense didn't look good either. And they also had a not very good rushing performance yesterday either. So that's weird. So that's another questionable decision. And as I guess we can settle in with the, the last one, we could honestly go down the list and find a number of different reasons that I'm upset about the snap counts. How about Josh Kelly? 16 snaps. So can someone, can anybody explain what's going on in the running back rotation? I, I, I don't know what's going on because, you know, Roundtree hasn't been excellent this year by any means, but against the Vikings, I thought he had some decent runs. And against the Steelers, he had that really big run that was called back because of a holding penalty. It was like a ticky-tacky penalty, I think, on Lindsley. That was crap. But, like, I thought he looked good as a runner. And his reward for that was to be inactive. And then the guy that they had inactive last week which was Kelly, he comes in and gets 16 snaps. What did Justin Jackson get? Let's see. See if we can find it. <laughs> so none. <laughs> He's currently listed at none. So, so no snaps for Justin Jackson. Why? Why? I, I, feel like, I feel like Herbert could have used some more help than Josh Kelly we could have provided even as a receiver, but instead the target goes to Darius Bradwell and Darius Bradwell doesn't get a single handoff. In fact, the only person to get a handoff after Austin Eckler was Joshua Kelly, who was the guy that was inactive last week. <laughs> like, what are we doing? And that's it. He got one carry. Joshua Kelly got one carry and that was it. And nobody else got a carry. Justin Jackson was there. Darius Bradwell was there. <laughs> what are we doing? And I get that they were behind, but they weren't really like that behind. There's no reason Bradwell couldn't have run it a couple of times. There's no reason Justin Jackson couldn't have played one offensive snap. But Kelly gets 16. I don't know, guys. I you know I've been kind of critical of some of the personal decisions. Some of them early on, I get not having Hymas start over Schofield. 
I was iffy about, even kind of unhappy about, but I kind of get it because at that time, you plug in the veteran and Schofield in general has played okay. Him being a depth option next year, I don't mind. But now we're in week 12 and Calamete is starting over Hymas, despite the fact that, you know, Brandon Thorne thinks he's Joe Tooney. Not that the Chargers have to listen to Brandon Thorne, but I would. <laughs> they think he's Joe Tooney, had a second round grade on him. He played great in the preseason. We all saw him play well in the preseason. He earned, he went from third string rotating to second string rotating to second string starting and like firm grip on the left guard spot. He's completely healthy as far as we're aware. And like Senu Kalamete? And Jerry Tillery having 89% of the snaps in his return at the detriment of the other guys around him, like Gaziano, only having seven. That's so frustrating. And this in, this in particular, the interior defensive line group frustrates me the most because you saw, I mean, who were the best interior defensive linemen in the preseason? Cortez Broughton, Brandon Fajoko, Forrest Merrill, Joe Gaziano. All of those guys played very well. Yes, they were playing backups, but they played very well and they played well in training camp. Cortez Broughton was arguably like their most consistently good, despite the fact that he was hurt. But when he was in, he played well, and he finished the preseason very well. And they cut him, and they cut Fajoko, and they kept Merrill for about two days, and they cut him. And I think they cut Gaziano, but then they all came into the practice squad. They signed Banks, and the Banks is gone now. And so the, these guys ball out in the preseason. Mind you, Jerry Tillery gets the entire preseason off because apparently he's too good of a player to be practicing in the preseason too important. So they, these, in, these young guys, the undrafted free agents, they all ball out. They all show that they belong in this team. Then Staley goes and cuts them, brings in his own guy who stinks. So they cut him and then bring up the guys who balled in the preseason to begin with. And, you know, they don't play a lot because of, you know, when Joseph is healthy, when Tillery is healthy, when Jones is healthy, when Covington is healthy, those guys are all out there. But then they finally get their opportunity to shine, just like they did in the preseason, and they do against the Steelers, who were probably a better interior offensive line at the, in that game than the Broncos were this game after they lost their 15th offensive lineman. And they shine again in the spotlight, and Staley goes, yep, those guys have earned more playing time. Apparently not. <laughs> Jerry Tillery, again, 55 snaps. The combination of Fajoko, Merrill, and Gaziano, they went from 88 snaps or whatever I said it was last week to 22 this week. Someone explained it to me. Guys, sorry, I didn't want to make this video just to be negative or to rant or whatever. We could talk about other things like the DB rotation um, you know, all, all sorts of different things, linebacker rotation, whatever, you know, uh, Kenneth Murray playing nine snaps, whatever it is. It's just really frustrating. And I really think that in particular, the two decisions they made at the trenches to, you know, put Kelamete in there and to take away their, frankly, potentially better, or at least more productive and energetic de interior defensive linemen, the, uh, the decisions to, in the trenches there, arguably cost them the game a couple of more run stops here of the interior defensive line you know a couple of more actual blocks or non-penalties you know against the against the from Calamete or from Hymas I guess if he played and maybe they win that game yesterday maybe Herbert is under less pressure maybe Herbert can find two more passes or maybe he just plays more comfortably because he knows that you know Hymas can kind of do his job better Whereas Calamete was a complete turnstile and a penalty machine for them. I don't know. It's frustrating. So again, sorry, I don't mean to make a negative video, but we're coming after a loss and they made some awful decisions, in my opinion. And I know people in, on Twitter are like, then you should be the coach. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that I know more than they do. But clearly, and maybe it is hindsight, but clearly something was wrong and that they made a wrong decision. And I'm going to say that they made a wrong decision. And I think it cost them points potentially the game they could have been better yesterday and they weren't and some of it comes down to personnel decisions so what do you guys think about these i'm obviously not happy about them 
Uh, but hoping for better next week against the Bengals. All right, guys, take care and bolt up.